When Tim Pillbeam is not writing about rifles, he's tinkering with them. Well, in between deliveries, that is. This is not a Christmas phenomenon. Excellent. Ooh, that looks interesting. The boxes keep coming all year round because distributors like Edgar Brothers, GMK, Viking Arms, Open Season and Alan Roan want Tim to play with their barrels and their bullets and he's keen to oblige. Tim not only puts them together, he pulls them apart as well to see what makes them tick. You need to sometimes take it apart and have a look as to where the money's been spent. And in this particular gun, it's been spent on the, uh, the stock, an h &S stock, and it's got a beautiful action as well on the barrel, beautiful fluted barrel. So uh, you can see exactly it's been well put together. Today he has a real cross-section of guns, from a good budget pest controller to something with a little more grunt. And thankfully, another of this morning's deliveries means we'll be able to hear it roar. Is that going to hurt? Uh, yes. It's uh, they're 500 grain Nitro Express. and uh, they are rather powerful. So with our collection of rifles complete, Tim talks us through the makes, the suitable quarry for, and the cost of what we're testing today. Starting off with the uh, Tika Super Varmint in 223 from GMK. It's a good fo all round foxing rifle. Value of around about 14, 1500 pounds. Moving on to the Marlin, unknown in this country. Marlin X7, um, good. In 243, so it's a, it's a foxing come deer calibre. Value of about £700, so a fairly good budget all rounder. Moving on to the more expensive rifles here, we've got a Mauser M03 Stutzen in 308. Uh, very high quality grey wood, worth about £6,500. Then we've got the new Merkel Helix in 308, uh, unusual. It's got the um, pull bolt system on it um, and it's worth about £3,500 because it's got high grade quality wood. Then moving on to the 470 Nitro Express from Kriegoff, value about £7,500. Tim is licensed to test any rifle and ammunition and has the facility to put them through their paces. On his farm he's built a practice range with an 8 foot high and 10 foot deep backstop with a variety of targets. This is where I test the rifles down on the farm. Uh, we've got a variety of uh, steel targets here from WMS. Um, the bulletproof targets, uh, 500 Brunel steel, and uh, they are basically a fox. We've got a roe deer and a disc here, and we actually test these at a variety of uh, hunting distances. Very, very safe backdrop. We've got an eight-foot uh, bun behind us here, and what we do is we go back and actually test the rifles uh, at uh, different ranges. There are no bench rests here. Tim wants to be able to tell the sporting rifle readers how each of the guns performs in real situations. Typically, he tests guns out to 300 yards, which he believes is the maximum for most hunting requirements. In doing so, he wants to expose the limits of the kit as problems are magnified at longer ranges. The, the, the sporting rifle is all about people who actually want to hunt with a rifle. and We're not interested in the target people too much. I want to make sure that when I lay this gun on my, uh, my high seat, the point of uh, impact doesn't change. Some guns do. If you put a bipod on some guns, the point of impact does change. So some people never use bipods, some people do. So therefore all I'm doing is making sure that we test them in a variety of different position positions to make sure that gun is suitable for what it's meant for. So there's high seat, sticks, trees, logs and prone. Right, that's enough scene setting. Let's put these rifles through their paces. We're going to work our way up through the calibers and finish with some festive fun. Tim would normally first zero the rifle and then test each in strings of three shots for accuracy on cold barrels. We start with a ticker. We're going to start uh, with the smallest calibre today, a 223 Tika Super Varmint, what I would call actually the, the absolutely perfect foxing calibre. Flat, fast shooting bullets, very, very accurate, off the shelf, uh, just a very, very good rifle and not a lot of money as well. Shooting. So what does he think? In this windy weather, we've got about 20 mile hour winds at the moment, and this shooting less than an inch grouping at uh, 150 yards. At the moment, this Tika Super Varmint is absolutely superb. 
Uh, a great gun, as I said, an all-round foxing rifle, heavy barreled. You can put a lot of shots through here and the point of impact will not change at all. Adjustable cheek piece, um, lovely trigger on it, set trigger. Also on the super varmint, you've got a Picatinny rail uh, on the top of the action, which comes with the rifle. And uh, so you can actually mount a variety of weaver mounts on there. So it's, uh, it's a good all-round uh, rifle. Um, a good teaker. Never, I've yet to have an inaccurate teaker. So uh, this is my foxing gun. Moving on to the Marlin in the high seat. All in all, I think it's actually a very, very good setup. Um, this whole setup probably cost about maybe a thousand pounds plus a moderator. Uh, I think it's actually excellent value for money, uh, just right for anybody who, who's a first time shooter. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. Now the Mauser and Tim wants to play to its strengths. Moving on to more expensive gun here, we've got the uh, Mauser M03 uh, with a removable forehand, the Stutzen version, beautiful inlay on the action and also on the, on the uh, magazine plate. We can have a go at shooting a, a bore here and see what happens. Okay, we've wounded the bore. Tim often gets his hands on designs that are new to the market. This new Merkel Helix has a couple of impressive innovations. The first is a switchable barrel. The second is crying out for a speed trial. Well, this is the Merkel Helix. Um, it, is, it is quite unusual. It's a brand new design um, and basically it's a pull bolt system. You can see there. What is quite unusual about this is that the actual, there's nothing coming out the back of the action. So if you look at this very, very carefully, for every inch the actual bolt handle moves, the actual bolt front moves two inches. So the idea is actually very, very fast and allegedly it's the fastest pull bolt system in the world. So let's see if it delivers more rounds than a conventional <laughs> bolt action. It's up against the Mauser being fired by experienced shot Matt, who has been invited along to offer Tim a second opinion on these guns. Ready, steady, go! Yep. Go! We give it a few goes, but the Merkel Helix is going great guns. Finally, we need a target befitting the gun we're about to test. Can you see what it is yet? Yes, a very even featured buffalo. Now for the big boys toys today. This is a Kriegoff classic double rifle, big five in Nitro Express. Uh, quite an unusual design to, to shoot the rifle. You push forward the cocking lever and for safety, bring it back. Once you've taken the shots, let them slide out, reload, and it's ready to fire. Many other systems, you've actually got to re-cock it. That could actually save you a couple of seconds. So it's just one of the things they feel very strongly about. The Kynamco rounds are huge and very expensive and dwarf everything else we have on test today. This is a standard 308 150 grain cartridge. This is a 470 Nitro Express. 308 has got 150 grain bullet. Nitro Express has got a 500 grain bullet. Foot pounds of energy with the 308 is about 2,600. This little fella has got 5,000 foot pound of energy. Tim is expecting the Krikov to deliver a donkey kick, but it's not as bad as he thought. The first one was actually fine. Yeah, the first one was actually all right. I'm very happy with that for the first two shots. I think I can do a lot better, but uh, we'll have another go and see if we can actually get it in the head. I was actually aiming for the, for the around here somewhere, so uh, slightly nervous for my first shots with a 470, but I think we can do better than that. Matt's turn, and there are some reasonable shots on the target. These double barrel guns need a lot of practice, and you should be trying to achieve a two to three inch group at 80 yards. 
Right, bring out the Christmas cheer. In this case, baubles and some festive pumpkins. It looks as if the producer has found a bog-off deal and ignored the Christmas suggestion. To finish off the day, we can have some fun and we're going to shoot some Christmas baubles at about 150 yards and see what we can do. The problem is we've got about four inches of wind, probably I say three inches of wind, it's about 25 mile hour winds blowing at the moment and uh, the baubles are moving, so it's more luck than judgment, but uh, we see what we can do. Now for a quick ballistic test on the pumpkins, from full metal jackets to ballistic tips. They make different impressions on our out of season vegetation. Full metal jacket 308, the, the bullet's just gone straight through and a very, very small exit wound. 308, soft nose, once again small entrance wound, but a lot larger exit wound. 223, soft nose, reasonably large entrance wound, massive exit wound. 243, ballistic tip, my preferred fox round. Large entrance wound, destroyed exit wound. <laughs> Christmas comes but once a year, but Tim's job at Sporting Rifle is a gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs>